the very bottom of Lamakimala Base. We got up to uh, the third to last line there on 32B, the Rava Amar. <coughs> okay, we were just finishing up the final halacha. And the main topic of yesterday's death was if you didn't follow the system that Rabbi Gamliel set in place, um, which was that you should go to the messenger if you want to cancel out the get, you didn't follow that system. And instead, you went by the uh, technical rules and you went to just any random court. So Rabbi Shimon Ben Gamliel said that your, your nullification does not work. And that the Takana of Rebbe Gamliel was so strong that it canceled out your ability to play by the original rules. And the Gemara concludes, the Rava Amr Rav Nachman, Rava says in the name of Nachman, Halacha Kurib Kurebi, the Halacha follows Rebbe. The Halacha follows Rehuda Hanasi, that the, the uh, her husband does have the ability to cancel out the get. Bishteim. And we also hold a grabby on the second point we mentioned yesterday, which is that if you appoint two different people to send the get, you are allowed to uh, cancel out each one separately. You don't need to gather them together. But the previous part of the Gemara yesterday uh, had said we hold like Rashid Mingam Leel. We had a few different stories that way. But Rav Nachman says, no, we hold a grabby that a person does have the power to cancel out the get. And if you appoint two different messengers, you can cancel out each one separately. So Gemara brings in one final example on that topic, which is the less lay the Renachman Makofet and Yafet. That means the Renachman doesn't hold of this logic that Rishim Gamliel was saying, which is that whenever court makes a decree, they want to give it absolute strength. Uh, otherwise, what do they really accomplish? If you could just, even though you're not supposed to, but if you could counteract the decree, what do they really accomplish? So does the Renachman really not hold that way? We have a different quote from Nachman Mishmul. Okay, we'll turn to Lamed Dalad and Aleph. Yisom Shabal Lachlut Menaseyazian. If you have orphans who wish to uh, create a clear, there's a big debate until it's exactly what we're referring to, but they, they want to divide up the, uh, the state of their father. Bezin Mamid Lam Apotropos. Bez and appoints, we refer to in Gemara as Apotropos, uh, court appointed uh, oversight. And Bez is going to appoint to each of these uh, orphans a, um, what is the special term? A court appointed. Guardian. Okay, yeah, I think there's a better legal term for it. And and each one will sort of fight for their own uh, orphan that they're that they're uh, appointed for. And those discuss there are a lot of different potential things that uh, money value could be the same, um, but you know if one has property nearby, you know one's closer to the different property, one's closer to water, whatever. So the the the, the dollar amount might be the same, but still they're gonna uh, uh, appoint these court, you know. Officials to create a, a a fair split on behalf of them. Higdilu, and then when the children become older, Yichol Nimchos. So Nachman said, the children have the ability to protest the entire split, and they could cancel out what was done originally. At, at this point in time, you know, when they're when they're children, uh, we will we will allow a split to be done uh, to the estate by the court appointed officials, but. We're not going to give it that much for us. And uh, we're going to allow the children when they get, get up to say, no, that wasn't really fair. I really want this. You really want that. It's not, you know. Rachman did Dayam, or that was Rachman quoting Shmuel. Rachman himself said, Rachman said, no, once the court makes the uh, the the uh, allocation of the properties, the children cannot no longer change that once we become adults. Because if they could, then you're not really giving any strength to the court's uh, division. You're, be chaos. Right, exactly. So even though the argument isn't so fair because they need to have a reason, there needs to be some basis to discuss a little bit. But nonetheless, we see that Shmuel himself very much, Nachman himself very much holds that when Bezin makes a system, they make it, you got to follow it. 
Yeah. Not over here, when it comes to Gittin, he holds like Rabbi, who said that even though the Gamil made a system, they have to go to the Shliach. If you don't follow it, it's okay, it's canceled out. I'll make up your mind, uh, Renach. Our answer is Hasam Mamona Hacha Yisura. Even though the words Makach Bezen the the idea of the court's power should be strong, are, is the same idea in both contexts. However, one is monetary dispute, and one is when it comes to laws of allowing a woman to be married, laws of what is allowed by the Torah, what's not allowed by the Torah. When it comes to monetary disputes, that's where Rav Nachman holds the Rabbanon, even though really you should be able to change it, but we make the rules, we stick with the rules. And when it comes to monetary disputes, that's very easy. I mentioned yesterday, the Rabbanon have a very easy power, Hefker, Rez, and Hefker, to create their own monetary law. When it comes to uh, what's Mutter and what's Aser, uh, there, even though you're right, there's a potential argument of Makal Abbas and Yafa, there Nachman says, no, well, since really a person does have the power to cancel out a messenger, uh, the Rabbanon do not uh, uproot that power just to add teeth to their degree. Okay, that ends yesterday's topic. And now we begin a, a new story. This, this time we'll take us the rest of the Ahmed, a very, very famous uh, little, uh, little Ahmed here. So the story begins with a person by the name of Gidul Bar Re'iloi. On the sixth line here, Lama Dalai Manal. Gidul Bar Re'iloi. Shadalei Gidul Adusayu. He sent to get to his uh, about to be formed wife. Also Shlicha, the messenger went Ashka to have a yasu the navla, and he found her. She was sitting there. She was uh, she was weaving something. Says Rashi. She was a very very busy lady. Amrla, the messenger said to her, "Hagite, uh, hello, I'm here, and I have your divorce document." But he didn't give it to her. He just showed it to her. Amrla, she said back to him, "Zeal." Go, Hashtra, go now. I'm busy. Uh, not a good time for me to be divorced. Miha, our guest. Go, go now, at least. I'll uh, come back tomorrow. Uh, let's take care of this tomorrow. Uh, we know there is a decree. We're not supposed to divorce a woman against her will, so she is supposed to accept it uh, willingly. But uh, it could just be he was being nice, and she, her hands were full, and uh, fine, I'll come back tomorrow. So Azul Lagave, in the meantime, the messenger went back home and uh, returned to the husband who had sent him. Uh, the Amrle, and he reported back to the husband how he did not actually do his duty yet that day. Amr, the husband got up and the husband announced, Baruch HaTov Ramitiv. Oh, Baruch Hashem. Baruch HaTov Ramitiv. Blessed Hashem who is good and does good. Wow. What an unbelievable thing. So the impression sounds pretty clear. That the husband has had second thoughts and is actually quite thrilled that she was not divorced. Avai Yomer, Baruch Atov Amitiv, Velo Batu Kita. Avai says, even though he said, Blessed is a Shem who does wonders and good things, he did not actually nullify the get. The get is still valid, the messenger is still valid, and the next morning the messenger can go deliver the get and the repeat that last sentence, Rabbi. The next morning the messenger can go and divorce it. He didn't actually change any of the halachic power that he had set up when he appointed this messenger in the first place. Rava, our Rava says, Baruch Atov HaMetiv, What do you think the guy is saying? The guy is saying, Oh, Baruch Hashem, that he's not, that, that he didn't divorce her, and I don't want you to divorce her anymore. And therefore, once you say to the messenger, I don't want you to divorce, he can no longer divorce her with that document. He can no longer, he's no longer your messenger, and then uh, they're going to remain married until he decides to create a new guest. So, Vaikim, if we, what is the, uh, what's, what's the source? What is, what is the, the logic uh, that this argument is based off of? So, Begilui Daita Begita Kemifudi. When a person reveals his mind, he, he reveals his knowledge about the get, but he didn't actually give a direct instruction. So here's where we're going to have this machlokas. The Abai Saber, Gilui Daita Begita, Lav Milsahi. Abai says, just because you kind of tip your head as to what you're thinking, that doesn't have any actual power to it. Rabbi Saber, Gilui Daita Begita, Milsahi. Rabbi holds that no, once you show what you want, that does have halakhic status and uh, 
therefore it's like the get is canceled out. So there's a big debate among the all the commentators, all levels, how to explain this not focus. The very famous not focus with a lot of ramifications. Uh, on the side of the page, from a smaller commentator called Tilsus Rid, um, he sets it up that uh, a, we'll see as a continuing in Gemara in a second. But Abai and Rabba both agree that what the guy is saying, wow, Baruch Hashem, I'm happy you didn't divorce her. We, 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 we know that's what he said. However, he never expressed the words, I don't want you to divorce her. It's a feeling. When it comes to many areas, you know, if I say, hey, I want to sell you this, this, uh, this field. I want to say, I want to sell you this field. And I plan I'm going to Israel. And that's why I'm selling you the field. And then my plan falls through. But I never said I'm selling you it only on condition that I go to Israel. If if I think it, but I don't say it, well, in general halakha, we don't really give value to that. Dvarim should believe, I mean, Dvarim just because you, we, we're not arguing that's what, that's what your plan was. But the words that you said were, please deliver this uh, divorce document. You never canceled out that with another speech. And therefore, Abai's argument, uh, this is one possible explanation of Abai's argument, is that uh, until you express it verbally, your your original uh, uh, directive applies. And Rabbi's argument is uh, to be somebody's messenger, and it's because he wants you to do it. Once he no longer wants you to do it, and he has shown us that, even though he never actually spread with his words, but if he no longer wants you, then okay, and you're no longer his messenger. As long as he showed us that he actually changed his mind, that's good enough. So we'll work with that basic Show focus. Cards. Show you your cards is enough. The game's over, or you wouldn't say that. No, I gotta keep playing. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a few more stories on this uh, concept. So I'm a rabbi. So rabbi says, What's my source that uh, showing your opinion is enough? Okay, Rav Sheish has once forced somebody to give a, uh, a get. We had an example of this yesterday. Rav Sheish has forced somebody to give a get against the man's will. Sahadi and this guy went over to the witnesses and said to them, Oh, oh by the way, Rav Sheish has told you Lipatul Gita. Okay, so you had this uh, misbehaving husband. Rav Sheish has forced him to uh, give a get, to uh, command the, the court to write a get. And then the next day, before the get was delivered, the husband went over to those witnesses and said, oh, oh, Rav Sheish has said not to give the get. Rav Sheish has changed his mind. Right? So, you know, in school, never they trust your students when they say that a different teacher or principal said something. Um, but uh, here, the guy was saying that Rav Sheish has said the get's not a good get anymore. So, uh, um, um, and if Shesha said the get's been canceled out, we need to make a new get. So Rabbi says, what, 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 what happens? The guy actually said, go give the get to my wife. That's what he said. The next day he went over to them and said, if Shesha said not to. Now, he never expressed in his words, I don't want you to give the get. But if he says Rishesha says not to, he's obviously showing that he doesn't want to do it anymore. And Rishesha said, that's good enough to count as a cancellation. So we see that tipping your hand is enough to count as a cancellation. So Abaye will say back, And the way Rashi learns Kamara, Abaye is saying back, that, that makes no sense. Rishesha has no power to cancel out somebody else's get. How in the world the, the, the speech the guy said, Rishesha said not to, Rishesha, maybe he's the one who sort of was working behind the scenes, but practically speaking, you can't cancel out somebody else's get. So if it doesn't make any sense, the way you heard the story can't be. It, the story must have been where the guy himself actually did say, I am, I don't want you to get it. He must have actually expressed that, says Rashi verbally. By the Kamalu Haki, your part of the story is true. He did tell them Rav Shesha said not to, but that was Mishum de Panui. That's because Rashi translates the word Panui. That's because he was he was being beaten up, right? This guy we we had forced him to give the get, and if he just went back the next day and said, "Oh, actually, never mind, I'm not going to do it," we're just going to keep beating him up. Rashi says it means hitting him with sticks. So so yes, 
Rabbi, you heard the story correctly. The guy did say, Rav Trisha said not to give it anymore. But that was just one part of the story because that itself has no 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 power. So Abaye says you can't prove anything from that story because there, there must have been more to the story. He must have said, oh, by the way, I don't want you to give it. Okay, story number three. Amr Abaye. Mina Amin Allah. What, where, where's my source that just uh, tipping your hand is not good enough for it? This? this is one of my favorite stories. There are Sheshes, Ashkle Gita Lechasin Dirbimi Abira. There's a guy named Rabirmi Abira, and uh, Rav Sheshes forced this, uh, this guy's son in law to divorce his wife. Uvatle. And then after the guy gave the command to divorce his wife, he changed his mind. Tana, he repeated Ashkle, Shesha forced him again to go to the get, Ubatle, and the guy kept then canceling out the get. So, as we saw yesterday, the, the husband, you know, we, he has the power to cancel out the get to the Shliach. So, Shesha was trying to figure out some way to get this guy to give the directive and then not cancel it. So, Hadar Tana Ashkle al He went back a third time to force him to give the get. The Amr al Sahadi, Gave a different advice than yesterday's Gemara. Yesterday's Gemara, we said they told the witnesses to hide. But here he went over the witnesses and he said, Put some leaves in your ears, stuff up your ears, just stuff your ears, and then he can't tell you anything anymore. Very simple. <laughs> don't answer your phone, don't check your emails. Um, I guess it was really good material. Right, because you got to stuff here as well if you're going to hear the guy. But so that was the story. So Abai says, "Isalka daita kilo daita begita milsi." Now, if you don't need to actually say it, if just having the uh, showing what you want is enough, hakazule pikarai basrayu. They didn't stuff their eyes, right? They still see that the guy is running after them and screaming at them. Right, so they may not hear his words, but but according to Abaye, words are important. According to Abaye, you have to hear him cancel it out because that was it. they made a verbal deal that made a verbal cancel cancellation. According to the rabbi, just running after the guy and saying, you know, that's enough to say, yeah, I think he doesn't want it anymore. And yeah, Roshayshas wasn't concerned about that. At least Kamara does um, the story does create a little bit of a problem with some of the argument we were saying before. One of the debates here is: Does it matter that you hear it, or does it matter that he said it? Because in this case, it seems like a guy's saying it, even according to Abai. Abai is not arguing that he said it. It just I, I didn't actually hear it, right? I'm playing the trick. I, I didn't. So how, how exactly does this trick have 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 power? Uh, the question gets a little bit, uh, um, but uh, definitely seems like uh, from the story of Rishayas that there's something to a specific verbal declaration that the witnesses hear. Otherwise, the get does not get canceled out. So here's where we uh, start to shift a little bit from uh, what what uh, a little simpler uh, assumptions start shifting a little bit here. Rava, Rava will say back to the story. The fact that the guy is running after the witnesses. Are you sure the husband's yelling and saying, don't give it, don't give it? Rabbi says, I don't know. You can't hear the guy, right? Maybe he's yelling, hurry up. Give it already. Give it already. Give it already. It's causing me so much pain having to deal with this guy. Maybe he's beating me up. and doing. Give it already. Give it already. Give it already. Give it already. Now, granted, the first time and the second time he canceled out the get after he he commanded it. But now that you can't hear his words and you see him running and being very animated, but that could go both ways. He could be saying animatedly, don't give it, or animatingly say, give it. And therefore, Rabbi says, once the point of refrigeration of the trick was that once you stuff your ears, we don't even have a clear illustration of his doubt. That's not enough, says Rabbi, to really show us what he wants. In our first story, where the husband said, Baruch I told him, I to, I know what he means. Baruch Hashem. I know he means, I'm happy he didn't divorce her, I don't want to divorce her. But here, where he's just running and being animated, sorry, Rabbi says, I don't even know exactly what the guy means. Okay, so now that is where you start debating, well, if I was there, 
right? You see his red face. You see, you know, like could could you have uh, clearly picked it up from from you know, without with knowing the story, without knowing how he was running, without knowing how he was waving his arms? It could be I could hear something, but uh, you could definitely try to judge with your own, uh, uh, you know, using your own uh, clues from the story. So. Okay, story number four. I'm our buy. Abai is going to continue to try to bring his crew. Mina mean Allah. What's my source that showing your uh, opinion is not enough? So the Huda Amr Luhu, there's a case, uh, it's a Gitan case, but it's found in the beginning of the Sephis Ksubis, where a person was going all, away on a uh, whatever, a journey, business trip, whatever it was. And we know, especially in the earlier times, very big uh, potential issue of people disappearing on their trip and never be never returning. So he wrote a divorce document uh, before he left uh, on condition. He lo asino ats lost in Yaman the Habakita. If I don't get back within a month, if you don't see me back within a month, okay, then you'll be divorced. And the idea here is to to, to help the wife that she shouldn't be uh, stuck in limbo for the rest of her life. Uh, so if something happens to me, you know, I'm planning to go on a very long trip, if something happens, I don't make back within a month, who knows, I've been arrested, I've been uh, captured, uh, maybe the person died, who knows what happened, and therefore you will be divorced. So the story was, uh, Asa, day 30 comes, whatever, day 29, day 30, we're, we're right at the last line, who Paske Mavra, and he was trying to return to the city, and like all good stories, he had the traffic problem. So Pasuk Mavarashi says the, the, the ferry that gets across the river into the town uh, was on the other side of the river. It was, uh, he, he, missed, he missed the boat, quite literally. And he, 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 he couldn't get across into the river, but he was, you could see him on the opposite uh, side. Uh, you could even hear him. Uh, the who he says to them, he's screaming out, Look, I'm here, I'm here, look, I've came, I've came. But he hasn't actually came. The deal of the document was if I return within a month, return to the city, then you will not be the worst. He didn't actually make it back to the city, he's close, so he's not actually in the city. So Amr Shmuel, Shmuel says, Lo Shmuel says, He didn't come. Not clear like he came, even though it's a, a little bit of an accident. He was doing his best and he's very close. But the fact is, he made it, he made a, a condition. He didn't come, and therefore she is divorced. She's not going to get married, but uh, they are divorced. So Bai says, Don't you see clearly that he doesn't want to divorce her? If he's screaming from across the river, I'm here, I'm here, then he, okay, fine, he's not here. But if he doesn't want to divorce her, then that should work as a cancellation of his original plan. This is a little different because here we, we sort of we gave it and we put a time on it. It's written on it. It was a little different than the case we dealt with before now. But nonetheless, a similar idea works. There is, there is a way of canceling out at that point in time. And therefore, since we see clearly that he doesn't want to divorce her, now he never said the words, I am canceling my guest. That's true. But he did clearly show his, uh, his desire to remain married to her. And yet, Shmuel said the divorce goes through. So I see that uh, just showing your opinion is not enough. The Rabbi, Rabbi says, Atu hasam gita bai. Over there, was he trying to nullify the get? Hasam the kumetanaika boy. The guy over there was saying, Look, I came. I fulfilled my, uh, the condition that I made. And he really did it. It, it, Rabbi says it, it, you can't really compare the stories because over there, the, the yes, we see the guy wants to remain married, but the guy never showed that he was trying to cancel his get. Baruch Hashem, you didn't give it. That's the way of saying I don't want you to give it. But, hey, I'm back. I'm back. I fulfilled my 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 condition. He <laughs> never. He, he he's taking the wrong path. Like his goal is to remain married. But Rabbi says, you never attempted to cancel out the guy. You were attempting to say, oh, I fulfilled the conditions. It's good enough to be considered that I'm back, and therefore the get shouldn't work. But since you never tried to take the avenue of canceling the get, it's, it's not considered like you even showed that you wanted to cancel it, and therefore that story is not relevant to our uh, Mahogas uh, Bayan Rabbi. That was a Phileas Fogg. What are you saying, Steve? 
sounds like Phileas Fogg. Ah. Around the world in 80 days. Yeah. Ah, okay. Gotta get gotta get the uh, gotta get the names. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the characters well enough. <laughs> Okay, one more uh, similar story to that. Um, there was a person who said to his wife, Ilona Sivna, if I don't marry you, I'll toss in Yomen over the next 30 days. Lehabikita, this will be a divorce docket. So this is one of those stories we read the first time, you're like, wait, one, one second. Are they married or are they not married? What? <laughs> so this is a case of, of, of Arison. This is the case of the first stage of marriage. That's the trick. Without that, Digmar makes no sense at all. That's what we got Rashi for. So here you had a person who had done the first state, state of marriage, Arison. So they are fully holistically married, but they're not 100% married yet, for whatever variety of ramifications. So they're, 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 she's, she's ready to uh, move to the next stage. And he says, okay, okay, I'll do it. Within the next month, we will have our new swim. We'll have a chuppah, we'll have a party within the next month. And if we don't do next month, all right, you can be free of me. You'll be divorced. And uh, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm such a, such a uh, shamazel that I can't get you married in the next month, then uh, all right, cancel all that. By the time the month reaches its end, he said to the witnesses, Look, I'm working really hard. I'm working really hard. I'm trying to put everything together. It's just not working. We're not quite ready. I need a few more days. I got the food prepared, but not all the way prepared. I have the wedding. I have the, guests. the invitations are out. Uh, I don't know what day they planned the wedding. Don't forget the hall. The hall is setting up. They used to actually build houses during this time. So there, there were definitely things that had to be done. He's going to build the hall first. So he's working on it. He's working on it. But he hasn't finished. So, Morris says, what, what are we concerned about? And maybe you could say this constitutes as a onis, like we had in last story. I, I'm, I'm here, I'm ready. It just, I didn't finish, you know, but I'm working hard. Just didn't take longer than I expected. Well, you know, it's begitted. That's what we saw from the story with the river, the Shmuel. Uh, it doesn't matter that it's an accident. If you said it, if I'm not done within 30 days, were you divorced? You're divorced. And if you're worried from the second part, part here that he's kind of showing his hand that he, that, that he doesn't want to get to be good, he wants to be married. Okay, put the Bible rubble. Okay, that'll be the focus of Bible rubble. You're right. Um, but uh, we'll see in a second who the law follows. And therefore, in this case, uh, they would be divorced. And our last similar story How would the Amr the person who said to his wife, again, at the first stage of marriage, we don't perform the Nisuin by Rosh Kodesh other. They have a Gita. Okay, then you should be divorced enough. When it came close to Rosh Kodesh other, Amaluhu went to the witnesses and he said, I said we were going to marry by Nisan, not by other. You heard other? I heard Nisan. Now the witnesses are the final deciders of that. They heard other. He said other. But since he, in his head, bought Nisan, so it's kind of like almost an accident. I, I, I'm trying to get married, but I, I just, I, I, I blew the time. So the main again, what are you worried about? Emishim ones, if you're worried because it's, it's an ones, like, and it's beginning. The fact that it's a little bit of an ones here, it's not its fault, doesn't matter. She's going to be divorced. Emishim Gilui died to be, and if it's because he's revealing that he doesn't want to divorce anymore, okay, plug to death, either other, that's going to follow it's not focus. And the mark concludes, the hilchas of kenachmen, the hilchas of kenachmen, the hilchas of kenachmen. This is one of these codes to help you remember a little conclusion here. Hilchas of kenachmen, hilchas of kenachmen, hilchas of kenachmen. The very start of today, we we quoted two halachas from Rav Nachman. One is that we hold like Rebbe that uh, the husband still could cancel it out if if he if he violated the rules and cancel out in front of the court, it's canceled. The other was he would cancel it in front of two, the two messengers separately. We hold like Nachman both of those two points. And we hold like Nachmani. What is Nachmani? Nachmani is a guy. There's a debate in Rashi and they're shown why we call by Nachmani. The one opinion is we call him Nachmani because that's his name. His name was Nachmani. Abai was his sort of uh, Gemara name or his almost essentially a title. Um, some say his name was Nachmani. His uncle was Nachmani. Uh, and uh, some say we call him Achmeni. Rashi says because Rabbi Bar Achmeni is one who grew him up and was his Rebbe. He's the one who brought him up. By his parents died young. 
um, and therefore he he was sort of called after uh, his family name of Nachmani, but he wasn't his own name. Anyway, we almost never call him that way. Um, but uh, as a little bit of a mnemonic, almost I remember this law of Kanachman, Kanachman, Kanachmani. This is one of the famous six machloksim uh, where we hold the Gabai over Rabbi. There are <laughs> like 370 machloksim Gabai and Rabbi or something, and there's six that we hold the Gabai. So this is one of one, one, one of them, and therefore you do need to make that clear verbal declaration. One seven fifty. 45, 45. Okay. All right. So let's make, make move. This one is a little bit shorter. Well, let's begin. New Mishnah. Let's try to get the next Mishnah here. Bori Shona. Okay. Originally, Hayim Mishana Shmo Ushma Shemiro Vishemira. Okay. I'm not even actually sure. It's my focus. I don't know. What, what was the, how do they translate the word Mishana? Originally, one would change. Okay. These are the Shona change. Okay. One would change his name and her name, his city and her city. So the situation of this Mishnah is where you have people who have different names in different uh, areas, different countries, right? And you can kind of picture, you know, in Israel, they call him uh, Man, and in America, they call him Norman. You know, that, that type of, you know, when he the Middle East, they refer, refer, refer to him as uh, whatever. So that's, 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 that's the, the situation. So the the debate's going to be how exactly do we clearly identify them in the divorce document? So originally, Rashi says that uh, what it means is originally they would just use the name from this area, whatever name this area uh, 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 the, the couple goes by. That's the name that they would write in the divorce. Here's going to be Azakin Shayakosev Ish Ploni. The whole same same we have a few Mishnahis here says that uh, you have to write this person's name and any other name that he has. Isha Ponis, this woman, the whole Shum Shayeshla, and any other name she has. And he's worried again about Tikkun Olam. That's more than it explain. We're worried that people aren't really going to believe that her husband really divorced her because look, her husband's name is Nathman, and this paper says Norman divorced her. Who's Norman? Never heard of that before. So we 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 want to clarify very clearly within the get uh, uh, what the names are to ensure that everybody will believe that they're really divorced. Now there is a debate when Mishnah says Kol Shum Shayeshlo, is that the actual text of the get? You write Norman and whatever name he's known by, or do you write Norman and Nachman? You actually write the two names. So most opinions are going to follow that. Kol Shum Shayeshlo means you write what. Every other name he's known by in whatever city, any nickname, any other name you write in there, and that is the practical uh, that we do whenever people have, you know, Bob, uh, Roberts, Ruven, you write all those names in, 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 in the gets, make sure we have a very clear uh, identification. Some of you use the Amishmul. Shalakul, the name the Sayyam, the Rigam Leo. You hear the Mishmul can tell us how this came, came to pass. The people from uh, outside of Israel sent this question to Rigam Leo. You have people who come from outside of Israel to Eretz Israel. Shmo Yosef Carlo Yochanan. Really, his name is Yosef, but his nickname is Yochanan or Yochanan Carlo Yosef. What should we do? How should we divorce their wives if they have these uh, name and nickname? Amar of Hiskin, Rabbi Gilad Av made this decree. She Yukosu and they should write Ishponi. That's a Yosef. Who is also known as Yochanan, the way it also explains it. Each opponent, this lady, the Cholshim Shayeshla, and who is also known by this other name, write all those names in the document. That will uh, 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 sort of solve this problem of having people uh, debate, oh, she can't be divorced because that's not her husband. No, every name is written in there, and therefore, no matter how you know her husband, you know that uh, that's the one who actually divorced. Amr Rashi, Rashi says, who does Chazik betray Shmeh? You only need to do this if he's really, it's really become established that he has these two names. It has to be a be So <clears throat> there's no direct, clear guide marking on this. But, you know, oh, when I was in high school, one of my roommates called me this. Okay. But if it's just one person, uh, one sort of period, that's not enough to require it to be written again. It has to really be a Chazik. It has to be. Uh, 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 clearly established that he has two names. Now, Rashi says, 
that uh, the point is that in this area, it has to be known that he has another name. If in this country, nobody's even aware or nobody's ever heard that it's ever used that other name, you can't call that his Kavli betray Shmei. We're not worried, but maybe there's a different place and maybe a different place has a different name. If in this place, nobody's ever heard that he has another name and this is where he's divorcing, then the worst document will be fine even if you didn't write down the other name. So uh, again, you can do a Google search to see how many different nicknames the guy has and that would probably be considered a Stasik in this area. Um, okay. So I'm layer of Abba Lair Rashi. Um Rav Abba says to Rashi, Mary Rebel Lazar, Kami Kabasa. Okay, we have a lot of uh, uh, earlier Mariam of Mary and Rav Lazar who also hold like you that it's only if we already know that he goes by these two names in this area, only then we need to write them both down. Tani Kabasa de Ravashi, maybe Braisa, that's also like Ravashi. Hayla Shte Nashim. I'd say a person had two wives. Achas be Yehuda, Achas be Galil. One in the north, one in the south. Galosh de Shemos. And this guy himself is referred to as two different names. Achas Yehuda, Achas be Galil. One in the north, one in the south. Begeresh is Ishto should be Yehuda, Bishmo should be Yehuda. There's Ishto should be Galil, Bishmo should be Galil. So in the north, he divorced his wife up there using his northern name. In the south, he divorced his wife down there with his southern name. Ainam Migrashis. A con of Ramil is those documents are not valid. Ah, she guards is Ishra Shabi Yehuda, Bishmoj Shabi Yehuda. Your wife who lives in Yehuda, you have to use your name from that region. Bisham de Galili Mo. And you have to also write your other name with it. It's that, that's an example where we know you have two different names, this section. And therefore, you need to write both names there. But as Bishra Begalil, and you went from the south, Bishmo Shabi Galil, you have to use your southern name. And you also have to use your second name. You have to have both those names on the document for it to be valid. If you went to a different place and you divorced over there, back on behalf of one of the names, oh, actually, if you went to a different place, you could just use one of the names. Wait a minute. Didn't you just say, didn't you just say that no matter what, you have to use both your names? It must be that the last case there is not referring to the same uh, exact situation. It's saying, uh, but it went to a different place where nobody ever used that second name. And the second name was never, it was never uh, uh, established at all. Then you don't need to write the second name. Writing one name is not. Okay, Mark includes one little story. How would that be called Miriam? There was a lady who was named Miriam. Who put a Sarah. But a small group of people call this Sarah. Okay, I don't know. Usually nicknames have something to do with the real name. So it must have been some reason why she was called Sarah. Maybe she was really nice, like Sarah. I don't know. So I mean, Ardai, and Ardai says, this is what you got to do. Miriam, the Cholshim Sheyesha. Her main name is Miriam. That's what you got to write in the name and her nickname. Below Sarah, the Cholshim Sheyesha. Don't write the get to Sarah and also known as Miriam. Because Sarah is not her name, main name. Her main name was clearly Miriam. Just a small, it wasn't like an equal English name, legal name, Hebrew name. Her name was Miriam, and there was a little bit of called her Sarah. So since there's a little bit of called Sarah, you should put that in, but make sure that they get, we don't want to make people think the other way. Oh, this, you can't be you. You're not called Miriam. You're called, you're kind of called Sarah, you're called Miriam. You want to make sure that the main name is truly the main name. And that's where this topic ends. We'll pick it up from the next mission of tomorrow. I think we're rumors back tomorrow. Uh, yeah, this area for sure is exactly what we do. Obviously, just to uh, you know, how many names we have.